Let's turn our attention to Germ for a second. Jeremy Nell's been a guest on our show a number of times. Uh, he's also a famous South African cartoonist. Uh, he's he's probably the second most, if not the most famous cartoonist in South Africa. He does great work, and a lot of it pushes boundaries and upsets a lot of people. Um, he definitely has a political bent, as most cartoonists in history have had. Um, there's no such thing as an objective cartoonist. They're not trying to be journalists, but they are social commentators. And I wonder where the lines of censorship start and stop, because Germ told me last week he's been banned from YouTube, and there seems to be a campaign to deplatform him everywhere. So he's now making plans to to get onto platforms where they can't get to him, they, whoever they are. So, Germ, first of all, how are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm morning. Sorry, I, um, I was having some issues uh, with the technical side of things, but I think everything's fine as long as I can be heard. I'm happy. We can hear you and we can see you, which is good. So, oh, that's a first good of all, start. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, a, that's a good thing. Uh, our eyes and ears work, and so does the technology. We're off to a great start. So, first of all, what happened with uh, with YouTube? Because Facebook mm -hmm. deplatformed you what last year? Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. Okay. So there's a bit of context here. So Facebook. My fan page, not my personal page. Obviously, there's a difference, right. like the business page, um, which had a, around about 60,000 fans. And of course, that's not a lot in the grand scheme of things. But for me, it was a lot. Uh, sure. It, it took me a while to get to that number. And I kept on getting messages from Facebook saying, look, you're violating the rules. You're violating the rules. This post has been removed. That post has been removed. Uh, please read the community standard guidelines so that you don't do this again. Of course, they don't tell you what it is. They don't tell you which part of the community standards no. you're, you're violating. And it could be anything. I mean, those community standards are everything from like encouraging suicide and wishing death on someone, yes. which is obviously not good, right the way through to upsetting somebody by misgendering them by mistake. Yeah. Well, let me give an example. Okay. So, I mean, I won't spend too much time on the Facebook thing, but let me give an example of one of the posts that that actually led to my ultimate ban on Facebook was <laughs> uh, there was this guy, I forget his name now. Um, he, he was found guilty of, of raping um, a minor, I think. And he spent something like 12 years in jail. Mm -hmm. As it turns out, new evidence, new DNA evidence came out that showed that he had not done that. And he was found to have been not guilty. Right, and so I, and I shared that story. It was quite a big wrongly story. accused, yeah. Correct, yes. Um, and I shared that story, and I, 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 uh, I ridiculed the hashtag "men are trash." Right. That got my my suspension finalized uh, because I was the bad guy in the story. And so and so that sort of pattern this continued. This is a bit weird. Mm. Well, you you could argue that the, weird. That the algorithm you have you have to go with the. Yeah, but is it the algorithms or is it because these days, if you don't go with mainstream opinion on things, that, that you must be silenced? I mean, I don't want to be conspiratorial about this, but it does seem that there's no... What is the appeal process in a situation like that? Well, Can you... Look, look so, so it's a combination of, of um, algorithms, which I think is the minor part of the story. The major part of the story is targeted attacks by various people who want to take you down. They want to cancel you. And all they do is, and it's they've admitted it. Number of people have admitted it online. Um, they go in groups and they mass report anything that they think is potentially uh, offensive or they don't like anything to get you down, uh, taken down. And so they just keep going until they win. Um, that's what they do. They do it in numbers. They're doing it on Twitter. They're doing it on YouTube. The same thing. They're using the mass report feature, which is why Andrew Doyle was correct when he said to me last year. At least on Twitter, when you block people, um, you, you stop them from mass reporting. Muting doesn't stop them from doing that. And so we need to actually learn that blocking is okay um, because it, 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 okay. It, it's, it's not foolproof, but it certainly makes it a bit more, a bit more difficult for them. To how how does that work? So just explain to me. So if, if some, um, in inverted commas, activist, some person mm -hmm. who probably doesn't have work and sits in their parents' house and they're tweeting about, you know, social issues because they want to feel part of a struggle. If that person complains about you, but you block them, their complaint doesn't get registered? Well, they can't complain about you because, remember, they have to be able to access your your profile and click ah, on the, okay. the report. All right. So, in other words, you've got to block these people. 
Yes, you have to. And um, and I didn't agree with that initially, but as I said, Andrew and a number oh. of these of these these intellectuals around the world in the what's known as the intellectual dark web have stated now that blocking, at least on Twitter, is a better is a better strategy. Just it's not foolproof, but it's better than nothing. Um, and it's okay, so it's, it's a way to get back. Uh, now, what the latest controversy is is about, yes. you've got to tell us, because this is YouTube. Yeah. And yeah. YouTube, really, they, they allow almost anything on YouTube, um, except copyright infringement, which they regulate quite well. Um, what was the problem here? Was, was it one of your podcast shows? Was it one of your cartoons? Was it some other piece of content that you developed? What, what was the problem? <laughs> okay, so that's the gold... That's the the million dollar question. So I did a show with the Kifness of all of all guests that you could possibly have. The one with the Kifness. Yeah, but the um, Kifness has been. He, he, we were told reliably by um, uh, the guy from from Ekuruleni, the mayor of Ekuruleni, Musina, that that the Kifness is some kind of uh, deep racist and white supremacist. That's uh, we were told that very reliably. Is that not true? No. Yeah, I mean, true. isn't isn't he just a isn't he a parody artist who has a great yeah. sense of humor and a musical talent? And uh, I I failed to pick up any of his white supremacy, and I've heard a lot of his songs. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had him on the show during lockdown. Is he some kind of racist that we don't know about? No. Listen, if he is, he's he's really really good at hiding it. Yeah, um, he's very covert. This guy, extremely covert. Um, listen, disliking him is like disliking a waterfall. I mean, it makes no sense. Um, so that was the, the trigger, that particular conversation. Both what did you talk to him about? What was, was there substance just, in there that would have been outrageous? No, no, lots of people watched and not a single, even his mother watched. And no one knows <laughs> what it is that, that, <laughs> that we said. We've spoken about it. We don't know what, <laughs> what, what the trigger was. The video was taken down within 20 minutes. And my, okay, and here we go. And then my live streaming ability was um, uh, revoked. No reason given other than you have violated the community standard guidelines. There we go. Yeah. Same story. Don't know what it is. It's just, you can click on the link, but it's a, it's a long page. You don't know what, what, you know, it's so vague. You don't know what it is. And, uh, and that's it. And I appealed. I went to the YouTube uh, appeal center, which happens to have humans. But I, I, I say humans in inverted commas because I don't think they actually type anything. I think they've got set replies that they just click because the replies are so clinical mm -hmm. and automated. Um, they just basically doubled down and said, I violated the community guidelines. And I said, what is it? They said, well, please have a look at this link <laughs> for more information. And, and then what gives you the community rules but doesn't <laughs> yeah. show you. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. Cool. So, Jim, I mean, we know that we're building up to a very fractious, very contentious U.S. election at the moment. We know Silicon Valley is in they're, they're in the pocket of, of Joe Biden and his campaign at the moment. They're, they're funding that pocket, if nothing else. And, and we know YouTube owned by Google and Facebook owned by Mark Zuckerberg, along with Instagram. These these are, are very much left leaning platforms. So we're not terribly surprised they'd be involving themselves in American politics and and trying to count out conservative and and right of center voices. But in South Africa, what's their interest here? And and, and who are these people who keep reporting you to YouTube and Facebook? I mean, do we know who they are? are they South Africans. We know who some of them are. They they definitely exist. Uh, they they mm -hmm. are. Uh, they are anonymous. That's the that's their power. They 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 are anonymous, and there are a lot of them. Um, we know who some of them are, and that's the problem. Um, I have a feeling now that people need to stop turning the other cheek, Gareth. Stop turning the other cheek and going. Ugh, if you ignore them, they go away, Gareth. They don't go away. Yeah, well, you, you're proof of that. And I think more people are going to start fighting back. So how do we do this? And besides blocking them on Twitter, you know, I've, um, I've, I've hardly, <laughs> I've tried really hard to not go on Twitter at all. But yeah, um, this is, this is the main that. nest of vipers, right? I think I want to quit Twitter as well at some point soon. Um, I, I don't know, Gareth, I don't know. I don't know. Other than just trying to find out who they are and hitting back with the same sort of force. In other words, if, if they get... The Kifness cancelled, um, then they must be cancelled uh, as a reaction. I don't know. Yeah, I think if you dox know. someone, I, I think if you dox someone, you should be doxed. Um, you know, if you throw the first stone, then it is acceptable morally and ethically to have you mm. compromised as well. Because these are the same people who will cry foul and they'll say, oh, this is victimization and you're putting me in danger. 
and all of that stuff as soon as anyone takes them takes aim at them but but they're more than happy to take aim at everyone else and destroy their livelihoods as they've tried to do with you a number of times so all right if you can't use youtube what can you use <laughs> i've tried vimeo uh, which is now the second largest video platform in the world now wait for it my very first conversation was with an engineer um using the mm -hmm. vimeo platform to live stream we chatted about so the title was um should you take a COVID 19 vaccine it's a question and the entire discussion is based around the problem gareth with rushed vaccines now we know that this particular vaccine is being rushed that you know i'm not going to touch chat about that i'm just telling you the context mm -hmm. um and i obviously think that it's a dumb idea to to uh, be vaccinated with, with something that was rushed and so our entire conversation was about also it seems that it might not even be necessary we may have developed some yes. herd immunity by the time yes, this thing yes. comes up and we specifically stated in the conversation guys this is not an anti-vax conversation we are in favor of vaccinations and i put about six science paper links under the description sorry under the video in the description so that anybody watching can see that it, this is a good conversation well gareth that conversation was taken down by vimeo um said that i violated its community guidelines on vaccinations <laughs> so are you certainly attracting the attention of every big platform in the world and that's got to be worth something germ i don't know what you're yeah. doing but it's, it's clearly pissing some people off well i lost i lost a very big contract a very big cartoon contract during lockdown because of my views of opposing um the mitigation measures to this uh, to this pandemic um which, which by the way have all proven to be absolutely Correct. on the money in your respect yes. in respect yes. of your opinions rather yeah, um, yeah, yeah all of the lockdown evidence is now starting to come in and it's making governments look very stupid did you see, so, did you see business day yesterday they ran an article saying that um netcare has uh, has brought out numbers suggesting that they they may have overstated the pandemic <laughs> no you think oh you think so okay, so just quickly, just, just to answer we had question. we had we had Nick uh, we had Nick Hudson from Panda on last week, yes. and oh, yes. the re the revelations that he put out there. I mean, a lot of people are are saying that that's also propaganda, but I I defy them to go and find the statistics and to yeah. and to argue with him on the basis of fact, uh, not your not your uh, opinion, not your the way that COVID makes you feel or your thoughts about government, but the facts around the statistics related to this mm -hmm. disease, and it's exactly. damning. It, it makes governments across the world, not just our government in this country, makes them all look like complete ass about face ignoramuses. Yeah. Um, so just to quickly answer your question, so where to? So I've got a a new channel on YouTube that I've set up just, just as an interim solution because since Vimeo and YouTube have got the same guidelines, I might as well use YouTube because it's the bigger platform by a mile. However, and I, I, I don't want to say anything uh yet but i am working on with a team of people that might be a solution to this whole problem um for people like me and those of us who want to uh, do live streams and conversations online uh, okay but this but this is this is going to take a few months of of planning but it is there is definitely something happening we aren't just sitting back and having a snooze in other words they're not going to get to cancel you Definitely not. That's the that's the plan. And, you, and you're, you know not, what, you're not just going to go away and be a good boy and stop bothering no. everybody. No, but yes, the wonderful thing also that I want to say. They can keep coming for us. And I know you, you've also had your fair share of attacks and they can keep coming for us. But one thing is for certain, we get stronger every single time. Like um, in, like immunity to a virus. <laughs> yes, correct. yes. <laughs> we get we get herd stupidity yeah. um, uh, immunity. So um, yeah, what is what is the motivation? I mean, I'm I'm really I get very passionate about certain subjects, you know, history and, and archaeology and architecture and science and there's there's so much stuff that I'm really interested in, in the world, but none of it that I would actually go to the trouble of trying to destroy someone else's career in order to learn or to uh, or to or to be closer to or to understand. It's almost as if there's a religious fervor that has crept in around political ideology. Do you have any explanation for that? Do you have any, no. any sensible way of, of ordinary people like 
you know, there are lots of people in this world who are not political. They, they're not that interested in politics. They want to raise their kids or they want to live happily. They, they don't want to interfere with other people's lives. They don't want to make rules for other people. They, they don't care what your gender or your sexual preference or your race or any of that stuff is. They just want to get on with their lives. And those people are confused, Germ, that people like you are always getting into trouble for what seemed to them to be mostly fairly mainstream views. I mean, it's not as if you espouse any particularly egregious views. You've been called lots of things. Of course, nobody can prove that you are any of those things. And that seems to be the only weapon in the arsenal of those people who oppose you is that they call you names and they try to have you canceled for your opinions. When it comes to proving anything, it's a lot more difficult for them. Yeah. And I'm confused as to how to explain this to people who don't get it, who, who, who are maybe not even that interested, but need to need to get a handle on it so that it doesn't come for them eventually. How do we explain this? Yeah, I, I actually was having this exact conversation yesterday with with uh, with a bunch of um, Americans, actually, um, on WhatsApp about um, about why there seems to be this this identitarian polarization that that has um, crept into every aspect of our of our zeitgeist. Now, if you remember, Bush was very hated, okay, in the early 2000s. And, you know, it was fair play, and he was an idiot in, in many respects. And mm -hmm. I thought it could never get worse than that. Uh, well, I was wrong. I've never seen so much hatred and polarization as I have since the election of Trump. Now, I don't know what it is. I, he's not, he's not, uh, you know, Kim Jong, uh, what's his name? Kim, uh, Kim uh, Jong Un. Yeah. Kim Jong Un. Yeah. Um, he's he was democratically elected. So what could this be? So Gareth, I've got a, a hypothesis that I cannot prove, but I suspect that there's a correlation between the rise of social media and and people that you dislike in positions of power. I, I don't know if you've watched The Social Dilemma, and I don't know if you've watched a couple of these sort of... Um, Hang on. Yeah. Sorry, say that again. You, you, hold on. You, you broke up. You broke up. You said you have a hy hypothesis about social media and the rise of that, and then it, it got confusing. Right. So, so I, I think that there is a sense of polarization that is occurring because of the fact that people can quickly log on anonymously, particularly onto any platform, um, they get massive, massive audiences that they otherwise didn't have, say, during Bush's time. Mm -hmm. And now they can they can create a false machinery of hatred and polarization. And it's the, it's the easiest thing in the world to go onto Twitter now and say, I think Gareth Cliff is an idiot. And suddenly you can get 500 people agreeing with you, all, anon all anonymous. Mm. And suddenly, before you know it, that... That thread of conversation has led to all kinds of things and accusations. And suddenly, Gareth Cliff is on, on the on the street lights, you know, on the street lamps tomorrow as a headline. Um, and I have a suspicion that 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 social media is correlated to this polarization. My wife agrees with me, but there's no evidence. This is just my own hypothesis. But I can't okay, think but, of but, any other reason, Gareth. So you're saying the numbers are inflated artificially by social media because there are. You know, there, there are people all over the world who have maybe three or four anonymous accounts or it's Russian bots or whatever it might be. But you can't believe. I mean, I don't think there's anyone in the world who goes, we've got to believe the numbers on social media. It's bullshit. Absolute nonsense. It is bullshit. It is bullshit. Um, but, but the problem is also that journalists, serious news people, use Twitter as the barometer for whether or not a story is true. And this is dangerous because it means... If something is completely manufactured out of thin air by someone on Twitter and it gather, gathers enough traction, the media will report on it. Exactly. And and that happened with me and the citizen and uh, God bless his soul, uh, Daniel Friedman. Shame. I tried to raise what, some money he, from... he got fired, right? Yeah, I raised some money from him. I got 64 and 72. And uh, maybe it'll buy him a cup of coffee. But what happened was... What, he... what, what happened to him? He, he was fired from the citizen? Yes. But he was involved in peddling fake stories, and he was getting his fake stories from Twitter. I was one of his of his targets, um, and and eventually it came to fruition that he was talking nonsense. You know, when you say things like right wing, and you in your column you you make um, associations with Nazis and white supremacists, this is a problem, Gareth. It's a big problem, 
and it has to get attacked back. There needs to be a counter attack. You can't just throw around terms like Nazi um, as as easily as people are doing today, for example. Well, my um, worry, my worry with too many people who use, the, the, you know, they say that someone is exactly like Hitler or someone's a Nazi or someone's a, a right wing extremist or a white supremacist. All of this terminology, when you throw it around, it has the effect of making real Nazis and white supremacists. And there are still some. There are some very, very awful people in this world. It has the effect of making them a lot braver because they think that it's mainstream. And it also has the effect of making people who are actually not those things the target of, of massive, unfair public uproar. Yeah. Um, it, it diminishes the strength of those labels, which should be applied to people who are truly dangerous to society. I mean, you are, for all yeah. the things you've done and said, and there's a lot of stuff that you've said and done that is controversial. There's a lot of stuff that you've said and done that a lot of us wouldn't agree with. Mm. But none of what you've said has inspired hatred, to my knowledge. You're a cartoonist, for God's sake. Cartoonists <laughs> yeah. have always been like the court jester of the media. And, and you guys hold up a mirror to the most ridiculous people in society, and you hold up a mirror to the most ridiculous ideas in society. And society has to learn to take cartoonists seriously some of the time and not some of the time. Yeah. That's not your responsibility. No, and I mean, my... I mean, I don't see myself as having any kind of role. I just do what I what I do, you know, what I kind of grew into, like like you, you know, you kind of grew into what you're doing. Um, but I do take great pride in ridicule. Now, this this that is the crux of hmm. why I've been paid for the last 15 years is to ridicule and it's to ridicule things, Gareth, that I think are stupid or mediocre. I don't ridicule excellence uh, because what is the point? Yeah. I, I take the piss out of things that I think are stupid. That obviously makes me look arrogant and self-important. But yes, of course, that's part of the territory. Because if you're taking the piss out of something, it means that you assume that you know better. Uh, and so as such, I come across as, as a prick. And I'm okay with that. So one last thing, because we're running out of time here. Cool. Truth. There's this huge emphasis on truth in the media at the moment. Who's telling the truth? Can we believe, you know... Uh, McEnany, the president's uh, press secretary. Can we believe that's Donald Trump's press secretary? Can we believe the ANC when they keep talking about corruption, but they do nothing to to stem it? Um, can we believe the media who've been selling us this coronavirus hysteria for the longest time? If there is truth out there, does it matter anymore? Because we say, you know, do you hear intellectuals talking about a post-truth world and a, a Trump post-truth world? Does any of that stuff hold any sway? And what is your take on, on truth at the moment? What can you believe? Um, yeah, great question. I, I've got this theory that I'm sort of developing that, yes, there is truth coming from large positions, um, say CNN, Fox, Trump's secretary, ANC, whatever, mm -hmm. right? But I've got this, this argument that I'm developing that I think is, is strong. I think that people need to start aligning truth and facts with um, the, the distance from power. Let me try and explain. So the closer the the source of truth be, I don't know, let's say Cyril's PA or Trump's uh, uh, team or whatever, right? The closer they are to a, to, a, to a position of power, the less likely or the more risky it is uh, to trust what they're saying. In other words, the the more independent, the more decentralized the source of information is, I think, the greater the degree of trust we should have in them. Does that make sense? It does to a degree. It, it sounds a little bit like a perverted version of critical theory, but I, I, I got you. No, I'm uh, just saying that I'm more likely to believe uh, you, Gareth, that uh, speaking about something related to you than, I don't know, um, IOL. Uh, because... because Remember, it's about seeing in the game, as, as Nassim Taleb puts it. You, if you've got more to lose, then you're more likely not to uh, mm. worry about the truth. That's what I'm saying. So uh, Cyril Ramaphosa has got no skin in the game. It doesn't matter what happens after this pandemic. He's still going to be a billionaire. And he's still going to be um, perfectly, perfectly fine, no matter what. But you mm -hmm. and I might not. So we've got more skin. Yeah, but, by, but, 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 but that, by that rationale, like Jacob Zuma is really in a difficult position at the moment. He's in a corner. They're coming at him. 
Um, he has every reason in the world to to either keep lying or tell the truth. According to your theory, he has skin in the game, so we must believe him. Well, well, that's see what I mean? Been to Bit of a problem. <laughs> well, no, but he's they're closing the net on him. I mean, clearly yeah, yeah, the yeah. guy is feeling more frustrated than ever. He keeps appealing, and it's not working. No, no, no. That's and and that's correct. What you're saying. I'm not saying that that you disregard. I'm saying that the degree that the degree of 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 reliability. I think is greater the further away right. you are from from centralized power. I, I'll I'll leave it at that because this is something that obviously you're still working on, and it's something I'm constantly wrestling with. You know, who do you believe? What's credible? I think these are problems that um, mm. these are 21st century problems that, thanks to social media, you don't you don't know who to believe. I and we've got think to social re- media is a problem, guy. Definitely, yeah, we've, we've got to re-engineer our matrix for figuring out what's yeah. what's what's real and what's not real. Um, because it's become very hard to figure that out. But we will save that for another day. Listen, um, let me know when you when you launch your own platform of some kind and and let me know how the, the YouTube, the new YouTube channel is going. And we'll talk soon. Cool. Thanks, Gareth. All right. Jeremy Nell, Germ. You can find him on YouTube. He's opened up a brand new channel there and you can go and see what he's up to.